Okay. We'll start on concepts of biology, chapter five, photosynthesis. So let me get my highlighter tool here. So what is photosynthesis? It's the uh, certain organisms that can convert solar energy into chemical energy in the form of carbohydrate molecules. That's what photosynthesis is. And then this chemical energy is used as food by cells in living organisms, providing the energy they need to perform cellular respiration. And we have seen what happens with that uh, last week. Uh, photosynthesis is the main source of energy for most life on Earth. And it is also results in the release of oxygen into the atmosphere. We have depended on this photosynthesis for food and our air. So solar dependence on and the food production. The autotrophs or cell feeders are the ones who carry out the photosynthesis. And there are many autotrophs. First, photoautotrophs, plants, algae, and some bacteria like cyanobacter produce their own energy source through photosynthesis using sunlight and CO2. Photosynthesis obviously requires sunlight. Then there are the heterotrophs, other feeders. So even if the food is another animal, it traces its origin back to the autotrophs and photosynthesis. So ultimately, think about deer eating grass or being eaten by wolves, or me eating a bear that ate a salmon, that ate a shrimp, that ate algae, and or just me eating a fish plate. We ultimately all go back to relying on autotrophs. So photosynthesis involves many steps and occurs inside the leaf here. And that basically converts six CO2 molecules and six molecules of water to produce one single molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen. And the xylem is the uh, vasculature that transports water from the roots all the way up to the leaves. And the phloem or is the uh, uh, vasculature that carries sugar that are produced in the leaves to the rest of the entire plant. So how does... Um, some roots are sweet, yeah, that's why they have sugar, that's why they have um, sugary taste. Potato is also another uh, root vegetable, right, that has a lot of starch. So the question, how does water travel up this far, this high? And this is all because of hydrogen bonding and evaporation of water around the leaves that creates a negative pressure. More on that, uh, maybe. Uh, in plants, photosynthesis occurs in the leaves uh, with layers of cells and different top and bottom. In particular, this occurs in the middle layer we call the mesophyll. Mesophyll is shown here. And this uh, exchange of CO2 and O2 occurs through this tiny little opening called stomata. It's a small and regulated opening. Uh, hole in the lower epidermis, underside of the leaf. In eukaryotes, uh, photosynthesis occurs in chloroplasts, which are the which are found inside the cells, in the uh, mesophyll layer, in the meso mesophyll layer, and that's what this all this stuff is. And the chloroplasts also have double membrane, just like mitochondria. And within the chloroplast, there's a third membrane sac called the thylakoids. And here are the thylakoids stacked on top of each other. Just for scale, here's a one of the cells that's zoomed out into or zoomed into. And inside the plant cell are these chloroplasts. So thylakoids are stacked to form what we call granum. And this stack, one stack here, is called the granum. 
whole bunch of grain on them makes up the grain up. And the thylakoids have thylakoid space inside of it. And outside the thylakoids is called a stroma. Stroma is located out here. And embedded in the thylakoid membrane are the chlorophylls, which photosynthesis uses. And the chlorophyll, the pigments, is what makes uh, plants green. Photosynthesis has two stages, the light-dependent reaction and the light-independent cycle or the Calvin cycle. Light-dependent reactions occur in the thylakoid membrane. There's light coming in and it takes some water and takes ADP and puts out ATP and NADPH. And chlorophyll uses the sunlight to convert it into chemical energy by this process right here. And the water, H2O, is hydrolyzed then into water or oxygen, excuse me. And this is what gets released into the atmosphere. And in the Kelvin cycle, in the stroma of the chlorophyll or the chloroplast, right? Uh, the chemical energy from light-dependent reaction fixes the CO2. This is what produces the glucose. So what is, uh, just a little information on the light. What is the light? Light is the form of energy, the autotroph transform into chemical. Solar energy travels in waves, and the uh, energy can be determined, determined by the wavelengths from crest to crest or trough to trough. Longer the wavelength, have the the less energy that they have, and the shorter the wavelengths. Opposite of frequency, you know, how fast crest is moving, contain more energy, higher energy. So shorter wavelengths, higher energy; longer wavelength, lower energy. Visible light is one part of energy that is emitted from the sun. Um, UV to the left of the visible spectrum, UV is over here. And they have higher energy because they have uh, shorter wavelengths. <clears throat> and the infrared to the light, infrared to the light over here, right of the uh, visible spectrum has less energy. And obviously X-ray has higher energy than the UV. Higher energy, can be dangerous to living system. And water filters out UV. Where do people say uh, life evolved from? Inside the water. And that's one of the reasons people think, people think that. And the photosynthetic uh, pigments involved in photosynthesis, uh, in, involved in this process, they observe only certain spectrum of light and that's between 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Chlorophyll A absorbs about 400 nanometers and 680 nanometers. Chlor chlorophyll B absorbs about 450 and 650. And combined both chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, they both reflect, reflect uh, 500 nanometers and 600 nanometers, which is this region here. And what color are the plants? Plants are green, and this is the reason why. And having this mix of uh, pigments benefits the plant because it gets to use wi uh, wider ranges of wavelengths. Light-dependent reactions convert light energy into chemical energy. And this chemical energy is then used in the Kelvin cycle to produce glucose. So this ATP will be used in the stroma by the light uh, particle, or light reaction, the dark reaction, kind of Kelvin cycle. And the photosystem too, may, made up of pigments chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And the proteins are on the surface of the thylakoid membrane 
And pigment stains photosystem two absorbs one photon at a time in the range of 680 uh, nanometers. We'll look at uh, a little more closely as to what's happening here. The photon comes along and hits the chlorophyll and excites an electron in it. The electron gets higher energy. And that's what's happening here. This is the photosystem one, uh, photosystem two, I'm sorry. And, and the excited electron breaks free from an atom in the chlorophyll. In other words, chlorophyll donates an electron. And this high energy electron moves along this chlorophyll molecules to the reaction center eventually. And basically this high energy electron is being relayed by uh, the chlorophyll in the photosystem. And the excited electron eventually reaches the reaction center, which is, which is here. This whole thing is the reaction center. And the electron is donated to the primary electron acceptor in this reaction center in the photosystem too. And this is this whole thing is the photosystem too. And light comes in through the uh, stroma and water is in the dilakoid space. Okay. And then photosystem two splits the water that came in into oxygen and proton by donating two electrons from itself. So electrons from the H2O replaces donated electrons in chlorophyll. All these chlorophyll have lost or donated their electrons. Now at this point, water is donating more electrons. So primary electron receptor receives the electron from the water. Uh, its name is pheophyton in photosystem two, but that's not really that important. <clears throat> And then from the primary photo electron acceptor, the electrons are relayed down the electron transport chain. Again, very similar to what happens in mitochondria. What does the electron transport chain do in mitochondria? It sets up the proton gradient. For what pur purpose? To produce the proton motive force to produce ATP. So, uh, let me... Let's just remind ourselves of that. Electrons from NADH and FADH2 are passed along the protein complexes one through four through here. And in doing so, in the matrix, in, in the intermembrane space, the proton motive force is generated. So the proton gradient is set up across the intermembrane between the matrix and intermembrane space. And the ATP synthase, again, ACE, an enzyme, couples the ATP production to the, the proton flow. Proton flows down the proton uh, gradient and ATP synthase uses that energy to produce ATP. And in light, Dependence uh, reactions, the energy from electron is used to pump proton from the stroma into the thylakoid space. This, this is basically matrix to inner membrane space in mitochondria. That's the parallel. So how will the proton gradient be useful in a chloroplast? Make ATP? In this scenario, where is the stroma and where is the thylakoid space? Thylakoid space is down here, where proton gradient is being set up, and stroma is up here, where protons are moving into the thylakoid space. So then elect uh, excited electron then again, similar to electron transport chain in mitochondria, is relayed through various proteins in the membrane and moves to the photosystem one, photosystem one. And PS1 also needs to be excited by a photon, but uh, by a different wavelength, with a different wavelength, 700 nanometers. 
and the photosystem one really is the excited electron two, NADP plus reductase. A's enzyme again. So what does uh, this enzyme do? It's a reductase, so it must be reducing the NADP plus. If it gains an electron, it's reduced. So reductase will make NADP gain electrons and become reduced. Electron from PS1 reduces NADP to NADPH using the uh, reductase enzyme. And in doing so, proton motive force is again used to produce ATP. And the, this is a thylakoid space. Proton gradient is set up in this space. Stromine is up here. So this proton is flowing down its own gradient through the ATP synthase. And these ATPs and NADP H's, NADP H's here, it's been reduced. This is the NADP plus reductase. These two energy dense molecules will be used to fix the carbon. So basically, energy from sunlight is stored by NADP, H, and ATP uh, as, a, as, as a phosphate bond in ATP's case and as an oxidizing compound. ATP synthase uses the proton motive force as in uh, chemiosmosis. Electron in photosystem one reduces NADP plus to NADP H. And now we are ready for assembling some glucose. Uh, let's just get a summary of light dependent reaction here before we move on. Uh, so here's a photon that excites an electron in photosystem two. And photosystem two splits water into proton and oxygen. And photosystem two relays the electron to photosystem one down the using the electron transport chain. And in doing so, it produces the proton gradient. And then in photosystem two, in photosystem one, the electron is used to produce NADPH by the NADP reductase. And then, of course, the ATP synthase uses the proton gradient to make the ATP. Mm, let's stop there for right now.